Hello, thanks for turning on my video today on complex numbers and writing equations at Involver Solutions. If you've opened up the slides for today, you'll notice the first slide is a lot of warm-up problems on complex numbers. So I would suggest that at this point you pause this video, try all the problems that you see, and when you're ready, come back, unpause the video to check your answers. And here is what you should have come up with for these 12 problems. Okay, at this point, if you need to look this over any longer, you can pause the video again. But otherwise, I'm going to move forward with what we're going to talk about in this video today. So today we're going to talk about how we can use the answers to build an equation. So we've been for the whole chapter, we've been, we've been given an equation and we've been asked to find the solutions to the equation, the numbers that would make the equation true. In this video, we're going to look at if we're given the solutions to an equation, can we build that new equation? Okay? So the linear factorization theorem basically says that if we take all the solutions and set them up as x minus that solution times x minus that solution times x minus that solution forever, how many solutions we have, and multiply that all out, we will get our new function. So let's take a look at our example one here. We want to write a polynomial function f of x that has solutions one, two, and three. All right, so if one is a solution, that means x minus one. If two is a solution, that means x minus two. And if 3 is a solution, that means x minus 3 are all part of the factorization of our function. So that is the function right there. But we are looking for it to be expanded out. Okay, so let's start by distributing x minus 1 times x minus 2. That would be x squared minus 1x minus 2x plus 2 times x minus 3. And now we have to distribute all that out again. So you're going to distribute x to all three of these terms and then negative 3 to all three of these terms. So x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 3x squared plus 9x minus 6. And then all we need to do after that is to combine like terms if there are any and write it in descending order. So our final answer here would be x cubed minus 6x squared plus 11x minus 6. Okay, and what that means is this function has zeros of these three numbers. If we were to ask, if someone asked us to find the zeros of this function, these are the answers we would get. If we set this equal to zero, these are the answers we would get for x. All right, so that's all real numbers, but what if we have an equation that has complex solutions, okay, like we've been working with yesterday? Well, we can do that as well. Sometimes it can be a little bit more challenging, but before we can actually do that, we need to understand this next theorem, the conjugate roots theorem. It says if a complex number is a zero of a function, its conjugate is also a zero of the function. So let's just take a look at a couple of those examples first of finding zeros given what we know here. So if I told you a function has a third degree and it has zeros of 2 and 1 plus 3i, so if it's third degree, that means it needs to have three zeros. There's one, there's two. The third one would be the conjugate of this one. So the conjugate would be 1 minus 3i. This next one has four zeros. I'm telling you one, two, and three. So the third one, the fourth one, be the conjugate of this complex number. So positive four i. And the last one here, degree five. So five zeros, one, two, three. But then also the conjugate of these two complex numbers. So two minus i and negative five plus two i.
How will that be helpful? Let's take a look at example three. Write a polynomial function of least degree with real coefficients in standard form. It has these two zeros. But it's important to know that if 2i is a zero, then negative 2i is also a zero. So g of x is its name. And it's going to be x minus negative 3 or x plus 3 x minus 2i, and x minus negative 2i, so x plus 2i. All right, when you do a problem like this, it's always a good idea to multiply the complex numbers out first. So leave the x plus 3 out in front, and multiply. We get x squared minus 2ix plus 2ix, which cancel, minus 4i squared. All right, knowing our complex rules about the number i, this turns into x squared plus 4. And then we're going to multiply this out again. So x times x squared, 3 times x squared, x times 4, and 3 times 4. And this is our function g of x, which has these three as its complex zeros. Okay, number 4. We have four zeros this time, three of them that are given to us, five, two, i, and then also negative i. So h of x will be x minus five, x minus two, x minus i, and x minus negative i, or x plus i. So I would suggest multiplying the two real parts together, two imaginary parts together. We get x squared minus five x minus two x, plus 10, x squared minus xi plus xi minus i squared, which is, of course, x squared plus 1. Now, if we multiply this out, right, remember, we're going to distribute the x squared to everything and distribute the 1 to everything. So x to the fourth minus 7x cubed plus 10x squared plus x squared minus 7x plus 10. And all we have left to do is to combine our like terms right here. So h of x must be x to the fourth minus 7x cubed plus 11x squared minus 7x plus 10. Example five. This one's going to be a little bit more challenging. Polynomial p of x of least degree that has the zeros negative 4 and 2 plus 4i. But we know that also means 2 minus 4i. Okay, ready for a challenge here? Let's write out p of x. Would be x minus negative 4 or x plus 4. And then x minus 2 plus 4i times x minus 2 minus 4i. Before I do anything, I was going to distribute the negative sign out here. So it would be x minus 2 minus 4i, x minus 2 plus 4i. And now, like I talked about earlier, Let's do the, co the complex parts first. Leave the x plus 4 out in front by itself. Distributing x times x, x times negative 2, x times 4i. Negative 2 times x, negative 2 times negative 2, negative 2 times 4i. Negative 4i times x, negative 4i times negative 2 and negative 4i times positive 4i. Keep the x plus 4 out in front. We have x squared minus 2x minus 2x, so minus 4x, plus 4ix minus 4ix cancel, minus 8i plus 8i cancels, we have 4 plus 16, so plus 20. 
And if you get to this part, all of your real numbers should be there. All of your imaginary parts should be gone. Okay? Now distribute the x and distribute the 4. x cubed minus 4x squared plus 20x plus 4x squared minus 16x plus 80. x cubed. 4x squared to cancel here, uh, plus 4x plus 80 would be our final answer for p of x. And our last one. So we have 3 minus 3i is a 0, which we know means that 3 plus 3i is also a 0. And then 2 with multiplicity 2. What does that mean? That it's going to be 2 twice. Okay? So q of x is going to be x minus 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 3 minus 3i times x minus 3 plus 3i. All right, so multiply the real parts together and the imaginary parts together. Before I do that, let's distribute the negative sign in. Well, we could do the real parts here first. That would be x squared minus 2x minus 2x plus 4. All right, but before we do the imaginary parts, let's distribute the negative sign in. All right, now let's multiply the imaginary pieces together. Leave the real piece out in front. x times x, x times negative 3, x times negative 3i, negative 3 times x, negative 3 times 3, negative 3 times negative 3i, 3i times x, 3i times negative 3, and 3i times negative 3i. That is lengthy. Combine like terms and make sure all of our imaginaries cancel out. So we're left with x squared minus 3x minus 3x. So minus 6x minus 3ix plus 3ix cancel out. Plus 9i minus 9i cancel out. So left with 9 plus 9 plus 18. Okay. Now distributing this out, x squared times x squared, and keep distributing that x squared. Distribute the negative 4. And distribute the 4. And finally, Combine like terms. X to the fourth, negative six, negative four makes negative 10. X cubed, 18, 24, and four make 46. X squared, negative 72 and negative 24 make negative 96. X and then plus 72. And there's our final answer. It is very, very easy to make a small mistake somewhere along the way on these problems. Okay, hopefully we didn't make any today, but it's very easy to just do some quick multiplication where we leave something out or we do something incorrectly in our heads. Just be doubly careful while you are doing this multiplication. Okay, thanks again for watching this video on writing equations with complex solutions, and we'll see you next time.